Now we covered this topic before in video 3C, but we're going to do it again because we're really getting into fractions now. So this is writing fractions in a standard grid answer sheet, lesson 6G. And if you've missed or skipped any of the previous videos, just go to the description and you'll see the links. Some of the answers on the GED math test will have a standard grid for one answer, for a single answer. We'll use these when the answer is a fraction or a decimal. It's going to look like this box here. This entire thing is going to be for one answer. When we write in the fraction up here, and these circles are the fraction bars. These are the decimal points, and here's the number bubbles where we would fill in the numbers that coincide. And the answer can start in any one of these columns. So remember, columns go up and down, rows go across. So the answer can start in any column as long as we have the room for the entire answer. Whatever is blank, we would leave those circles blank, okay? So leave any unused columns blank. And we fill in the matching circle below for each column, including the fraction slash bar. So if we have a fraction, we're going to actually write that slash bar and fill in the circle for the slash bar, and that's the only thing for that column that's going to be filled in. But the number's on either side, see? Mixed numbers can't be entered on this grid, so all mixed numbers should be entered as improper fractions, okay? So they're all going to have to be improper fractions that aren't reduced, all right? So take a look at this one. The answer is half, and we have a 1 and then a slash and then a 2, so we filled in the one circle, then the slash circle for this column, and then the two for this column. See? The slash gets its own column. If our answer is one and a half, which is the same thing as three halves, and if you remember from video 6b, there's a link in this description to that. When we reduced fractions, all we have to do is go counterclockwise. We go 1 times 2 plus the 1, and that'll give us the improper fraction. If our answer is already an improper fraction, then don't reduce it. Just leave it like this and fill it in, okay? So we do 1 times 2 is 2, plus 1 is 3. We keep that same denominator, so we have 3 over a 2. We have 3 halves. We write the 3, the slash, the 2, and then we fill in the 3 circle, the slash circle, and then the 2 circle. And they each get their own column. See that? If it's a five and a half or 11 halves, which is the same thing, and you need to convert it to an improper fraction, remember what we learned in 6b, and you can go back and watch that video if you need to. We do five times two is 10, plus one is 11. We keep that denominator. We have 11 halves. We write the 11, the slash, the two, and each one gets its circle filled in. And then this one is left blank because it wasn't used. See? 14 and a half would be 29 halves. And this is blank and unused, so it's just left blank, okay? We do 14 times 2, which is 28, plus 1 is 29. We keep that denominator. We have 29 halves. We write the 2, the, two, the 9, the slash, the 2, and each one gets its own circle filled, including the slash. See that? Now, see how this one started right up here in the first column? If we have room, we could even start it here if we want to. My advice is to always start it up here in the first column, though, okay? I think it'll be less confusing for you if you do the same thing on the test each for each answer. We just start, start it in the second column, and then each gets their own circle filled, including the slash, see? So it doesn't matter, but it might be easier to, for you to remember to just always start there at the first column. If we have three one-hundredths, it's very important that you fill in the circles for the zeros because three over one is a lot different than three-tenths or three one-hundredths. So you want to make sure they know it's three one-hundredths, okay? It'd be a real shame if you had the right answer and then filled this out wrong when you knew the answer and it would be marked wrong and you wouldn't get it to count towards passing the test. It could be the one question that kept you from passing. Got to make sure we fill these in correctly. We write this three, the slash, the one, the zero, the zero, and that's the circles we fill in. The three, the slash, the one, the zero, the zero, all right? So zeros are placeholders are really important, and if they're in the answer, you need to put them in, 
in the grid, okay? So take a look at this. It says Bob drove 384 miles and used 12 gallons of gas. What would be his ratio of miles to gallons for four gallons of gas? So we just learned this in the last video, didn't we? We're gonna use M for miles as our variable. He did 384 in 12 gallons. What would be the mileage for four gallons? So all we have to do is the cross products rule, right? We can do 384 times four. That's 1,536. That's quick on a calculator. And then just divide it by this 12. We get 128. So 128 over four would be the answer. And we would write 128 slash four and by writing in our answer in this top row, because it says you don't have to, but by writing it in this top row, you're going to have a better ability to fill the circles in correctly. Because again, it would be a shame if you skipped writing it in up here and then you filled the circles in wrong. So do yourself a favor and do whatever it takes to help yourself succeed. And if it's something silly as writing it in up here to make sure you do it correctly, then do it. You wouldn't want this to be the one problem that kept you from passing, would you? So let's try another one. Tala bought seven eighths yard of blue ribbon and five eighths yard of white ribbon to make a dress. How much ribbon did she buy in all? Now we're actually gonna get into adding and subtracting and multiplying and dividing fractions in lesson seven, the next video, and the video after that. But we did talk about having the same denominator. If we have seven eighths and we add it to five eighths, that's gonna give us 12 eighths. And we leave the answer as an improper fraction where this numerator is bigger than the denominator because we can't write a mixed number in this answer grid. Normally, we would change the 12 eighths to a mixed number. It actually reduces to one and a half. It goes to one and four eighths, which reduces then to one and a half. We're going to do that in the next video. We leave it as the 12 eighths, and we write in the one, the two, the slash, the eight, and those are the circles that we fill in, okay? And that one didn't get used, so it's blank, all right? Okay, you should now be ready to do the skill focus on page 87. If you're lost or confused, watch this video again, or watch 3C, it's linked in this description, and watch the proportion video just before this, okay, 6F. You should be following along in the playlist to not miss anything because you have to do whatever it takes to pass this GED, okay? So there's going to be a link. That's the only link that's going to be in here aside from the playlist link is that one for the answer grid that we did before, okay? It, we talked about whole numbers and stuff. So our next video is Lesson 7A, and we're going to talk about adding and subtracting fractions and reducing them and like and unlike fractions, okay? So I hope I'll see you there. I hope you do well on the skill focus on page 87. If you have some trouble, go back, retreat, regroup, and attack again, okay? Don't let this beat you. Don't, don't quit, okay? Have some grit. You can do it, and I'm here with you, okay? I'll see you next time. Bye.